Hi, everyone. I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Today is all about videos. I'm going to talk to you about how you can integrate videos with your Madcap Flare projects. Now, I'm not talking about the actual creation of the videos. Like right now, I'm recording myself, and uh, then later I'm going to go and edit the video. I'm assuming that you already have one or more videos that you just want to get into your Flare projects and make accessible to your end users. So uh, that's what I'm going to talk about in this uh, in this video. I'm going to talk to you about embedding videos and uh, different ways that you can do that, and then using just links to videos, which is what I do uh, with my own documentation. Um, I'll also talk about going in and editing you, those links, uh, however you're getting your videos in, editing that, and designing, getting, getting this uh, situated, sized, uh, so that it's what you want. And then I'll finish up with uh, just a few different things to consider. Now, uh, a few of the, a couple of the Flare project templates that are available within Flare when you start a new project have actually a video example in there. And I'm gonna go in and look at that. These are uh, our e-learning project templates, but of course videos can be used for any of your uh, per, you know, other purposes. It doesn't have to be e-learning. It can be online help system, knowledge base, you know, wherever you've got this online output, you wanna integrate video, you can do this. But I'm gonna go into these videos because, or into these uh, projects and show you and we're going to just kind of work from there. And then I'll, I'll do some from, from scratch showing you how that works. Now, um, Flare also gives you a ton of options when it comes to videos. Like it, it often gives you, a ton of, it gives you a ton of options for lots of things. But uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to go in and show you everything for all of these. I'm really going to concentrate on some of the more popular things that people are doing. Uh, YouTube, of course, is what uh, a lot of people, maybe most people, are doing. They're linking to YouTube videos. And there's also HTML5 formats for videos. And really, I'm talking about MP4s and uh, WebM. So uh, that's, that's what most people are doing, although you can do other things, which I'll mention, but just not going to go into a lot of detail on those other things. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's get started with talking about embedding videos in your Flare project. So let's begin by talking about embedding videos. And when I say that, I just mean that the videos are going to be there in actually in your topics, in the output when people look at them so they can play them and look at them right there. Uh, so with some of these uh, video formats, they, they actually are embedded. They're right, they're right there. But with uh, something like YouTube and Vimeo, they're not, it looks like they're embedded. They're, they're right there, uh, but they're actually referenced from YouTube. Okay, so just wanna make that clear. Let's go into Flare, into uh, one of these e-learning projects, and let's take a look around. All right, so in this particular project, I'm going to open up uh, in the Content Explorer, uh, this course content folder, and I've got this video topic in here, and that's where we've got a link. We've got a, we've inserted a YouTube video in here, all right, and that's what the topic looks like. Now, there, the other project template, e-learning project template, also integrates PDF. And so this topic looks just a little bit different. You'll see some conditions in there. I'll get to that later, all right? But right now, this is what we're dealing with. So you already have this video in here and it's centered. Again, we're gonna get to the design part later, but this was just simply added uh, by using Flare's interface. And I had the, I've got the, the link for the YouTube video. And I'm gonna copy that actually right now. And on so this is how I did it. So right here on this blank paragraph, I'm just gonna to go to insert multimedia. And you can see all these options that you've got in here, right? And I mentioned that YouTube and HTML5 are probably the most common. You can use these others. I'll get to those in a second, but right now I'm just gonna select YouTube. 
And this dialogue opens up. This is actually the same dialogue that opens up for most of those options. It's just that it automatically on the general tab selects this multimedia from the web option. And <clears throat> I've already pasted in, it remembered from before, this YouTube link. So it's in there, okay? And it gives me this little preview. And uh, so I'm not pulling anything from my project. It's I'm going right to the web. Now I can select different options down here. Uh, I can select a style class. Again, going to get to that later. Screen tip if you want, alternate text uh, if you want to make this um, accessible. So you can do that. Now you go into the advanced tab. When I inserted this, I just kept all the default settings through this. But you have options in here. You can go and specify, all right, what are the things that you want for the playback? Do you want it to um, automatically play? Do you want people to be able to open up full screen, see related videos? Do you want annotations on uh, that the owner of the video up on YouTube might have added to that, um, you know, auto hide? All these things in here, you can control the progress color bar. So these are pretty self-explanatory. You can figure out what these are. And if you don't know exactly what these are, you can look in the help. Or what I often do is I'll just select different things and then I'll test it on a small project and see what exactly something does and if I want it. But again, I just kept all the default options uh, when I inserted uh, that in the project template. Now size, these other things have to do with the look and feel of this. So you can control the size in here. Right now it's just, it's, all this is set to the, the default, the width, the height, minimum, maximum. It's all using just the default size. And uh, you can also set the position. If you want to position the video, maybe to the side of some content, you can use these options, borders and margins, background. But I always prefer to use a style sheet. So I'm going to do some um, later in this and show you the style sheet. But you, you can set these in here. It's just I like the style sheet because it keeps all the videos, uh, you know, the same, consistent. So that's pretty much it. I, and then I'm just going to click OK and it inserts it. Right. And uh, so now you just generate and build. And as long as people have an Internet connection, they can get to it. They can play the video and you're going to notice. Yeah, this one is left aligned. This one is centered again. I'm going to show you a little bit later how I did that in the style sheet. So that's a YouTube video. And so that was pretty easy. Now, the other one that I want to bring up is uh, an, an HTML5 or an MP4, because when you go up here to in the media, yeah, you've got all these options in here, Windows Media and QuickTime and, you know, um, but again, MP4 is probably the most common, the HTML5 formats. And I know I'm just going to insert one here. The thing is, Again, the YouTube one is just by reference. It's the actual videos up on YouTube. But when you're using one of these other options, you're putting the video most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you're putting it into your project. You're copying it into your project. So let's do that with uh, an MP4. I'm going to insert HTML5 movie. It's going to bring up the exact same dialogue, except now this is selected by default, multimedia in project. And the filter, you can go and choose what kinds of videos you're interested in. And right now the filter is automatically on the HTML5 one because that's what you selected. All right, I don't have a video in here yet, but I can click this button. And it brings up this dialogue showing me everything I've got on my, uh, you know, in on my computer. So I can select a folder. I got a videos folder right here. You can see I've got a couple of MP4s in here. Actually select this one. That's of uh, one of my dogs when he was a puppy and it puts it in here. And again, same options right in here. Now you go into the advanced tab and these options are going to be different depending on what kind of video you 
are trying to add. So with an MP4, it's pretty basic in here. Do you want to show the play controls? Do you want it to do you want it to loop? You know, when it first comes up, do you want it to be muted or not? And uh, and then again, same things uh, on these other tabs. So I'm just going to click OK. But what happens this time is it brings up this dialog and says, "Hey, I'm going to uh, I'm go I'm going to copy this." to your project, it needs to be in the project. And you go, okay, go ahead and do it. Now it adds this little gray box in here, but that's that's not the actual size of the video. It's just to show you, it's a placeholder to show you, yeah, you got a video in here. And what happened is it added this multimedia folder under resources and it put it in there by default. You can move it to another folder if you want, but you know, that is, uh, that's that's the recommended location for it. You can also insert mimic movie links by selecting this option. And it's just going to be a basic dialog that lets you go find the mimic movie files that, that you've got. So the difference here, if you are using Madcap Mimic to create your videos, you can you can link to those those files. But what the difference is, it's not pulling that that uh, movie file into your project. Instead, what it's doing is it will pull it into the output when you generate generate your output. Uh, another advantage of using Mimic Movie Links, if you want to do that, is you can also add those into a TOC. So you can see here's a TOC, and um, I could add a brand new node in here. And let's just say this is a video link, whatever. <clears throat> move that back, double click this thing. I have it set to open this on double click. And uh, so now on the general tab, instead of a topic or something else, I could go down here to mimic movie uh, or movie collection and I could select that. And that allows me to go find that. And so then this would turn into a link specific for that movie. So when people look at the TLC, they just click on that and it will open up the movie. I'm gonna undo all of that. That's just another option that you have if you're doing mimic movies. But we're concentrating on HTML5, the MP4 and the, the uh, YouTube. So we've inserted these in here. Let's go ahead and generate the output and just see what we've got just by using the default settings. So I'm gonna click this and let's click that one and generate this output. Shouldn't take too long here. It's a pretty small project. <clears throat> Even though I've got the, the movie file in here, uh, that one uh, is still not that big of a not that big of a project. And so I'm just gonna move through here till I get to that video topic. And there it is. All right, so there is, there's my dog Gilbert. All right, so everyone say, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> that's that's a pretty big video. That's the original size. And you can see <laughs> the scroll bar shows there's even more off to the side. The YouTube video is at this size. You click and play this thing. So that's probably a more digestible size for that, even though it's not as cute as Gilbert, all right? And uh, so that's what that's what you get by using the defaults in these things. But what we're going to do in a little bit is we will go in and we'll look at how to edit, how to control the size of these things so it, it is better. All right. What we're going to do now, this is looking at embedded videos in those in those topics. I'm now going to go look. We're going to go into using links, text links, image links for your videos. That's what we're going to do next. So as an alternative to embedding your videos, you can, of course, create uh, hyperlinks like you do for other things, a text hyperlink or put a hyperlink on an image, and that can open up a video that you have somewhere. Um, I'm actually going to open up the Flare Online Help and show you how I've done this. So here are some search results in the Flare Online Help, uh, and this is opening up what's called micro content at the top. And you can see that I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. 
And some of what you see are these links for videos. So this is just a simple text hyperlink and it's got an image next to it. And I also have it up here in this little kind of toolbar thing that I added and, uh, and then links to other videos. And, you know, I've got a small image in here. So I could have added uh, a small video in here, the actual video and people open that up and then maybe open up the full size, but I wanted to do something different. So you click this and it opens up a movie. Now I could have it open up in another tab if I wanted to, but what I wanted to do was open it up in a pop-up. So when you click this, it opens up this pop-up window and people can see it at a good size. They don't have to necessarily see the full size. They can, they can click this and see the full screen, but it's a pretty good size and they can just watch the video right there without really leaving the topic. And then they click this when they're done. That's what I chose to do. It's not what you, know, you have to do. There's really just lots of options available. Now, how did I do that? Okay, let's go into my project here. So this is my actual Flare project where all the Flare documentation is. And I've got this other topic open where I've done something like that, right? So this is just text in here, but uh, I've got my, my uh, structure bars on here. So you're seeing, okay, when I click on that, it's an A link. It's, it's when you insert a hyperlink, okay? It's the same thing. So I'm just gonna right click on that and edit it, edit the hyperlinking. You can see what's, you're gonna see what I've done in here. So instead of linking to a file in the project, I've selected website. I've got my YouTube video in here. Uh, this is just bringing up you know, the text that that link is uh, associated with. And I also have a style class in my style sheet, which is helping to control uh, some things in this. All right, so that's very, very simple, just a hyperlink. But what's really making the magic happen in this is a, a JavaScript, uh, is, is some JavaScript files. And over on the left, you can see under my resources folder in the Content Explorer, I've got the, my scripts subfolder. And under that, it's uh, this stuff in here. So I've got various um, JavaScript files and it's really using that. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting a reference to the JavaScript files in my template pages. So template pages are what you can create to add content to lots of things. So I don't wanna do this everywhere because I have lots of videos all over the place. And I just wanted to put it in the template page for this particular thing. And it's up there in the head. Now I'm not gonna go into how to do JavaScript of course, in this, I don't want to go off on that tangent, but I will tell you that if you go into the Flare Online Help and you go into tutorials, uh, you're going to see I've got a couple of JavaScript tutorials in here where it takes you through and so you can see kind of what's happening. So that JavaScript file that I showed you, uh, you know, I didn't create, I can't do that. I, I, I don't know how to write that. Um, some tech writers can. And, but most of us probably can't do that. Or we could if we put the time and effort into learning it, but <laughs> I just got this thing that, was, that already existed and just uh, leveraged that. That's all I did here. So I just wanted to show you that to let you know that you do have other options. And I chose this partly because I wanted to conserve the space. I just, I already have a lot of stuff in there and I didn't, I just didn't want the thing right there and I didn't want it too small. Uh, and so I just thought this was a good solution for me, but you can do whatever you want. And this is text, right? But I could put the hyperlink on an image, which is what you're seeing right here. This is within a snippet. I'm not gonna open up that, but that is that image. If you click on that play button, you're gonna get the same thing's gonna happen, that pop-up. And I could do the same thing on this random image right here. I could right click on that. Oops, it's not opening because of where I am in this. There we go. And I could select hyperlink image. And it's the same you know, thing. I could go up here and select website and do, do exactly the same thing, but I'm not gonna put you know, a link on that. So yeah, you got options. You can do, uh, you can do the embedded thing. You can link, uh, put the, 
put it on text or image links, whatever works best for you. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get into editing these things and the design um, things that you can tweak uh, for that. All right, so you got your video and maybe you embedded it in a topic and now you kind of want to go in and maybe make some changes to it or uh, control the look and feel. So let's go back into that original Flare project that I opened and let's, let's go and work with the videos that we inserted. All right, so here again is that little square box that holds that video of my beagle puppy, but as you remember, that was really big. It was it was at its original size. Now, maybe I want to go in and, and select a different video for this or, or make changes to some of the settings. It's real simple. You just right click on this and select edit multimedia and it opens up that same dialogue and you can see what is selected and I could click this if I want to go find another video or if there's one in here already, I could select that. I could change any of these options any of these options, it's that simple. Now, of course, I can control the size in here if I want. But again, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to encourage you to do that. Of course, you can. Go ahead, and it's very simple to set the width height, minimum width height, maximum width, width height. Very easy to do in here. Um, but uh, I don't want to do that. I want to use styles. So um, what we're going to do is look at this, at the structure. Again, I have my structure bars on, turn them on and off like that. I want them on, they're helpful. So I've got a paragraph tag. This is similar to when you insert an image, you got a paragraph tag and then within that is another tag. And this one happens to be called object. So that's what by default is used when you are inserting videos. It's gonna put it in an object tag. All right, so, what I can do is I can open this up in, boy, I do that a lot. I'm gonna right click and select style class, edit style class, <clears throat> opens up my style sheet. And in here, I'm working in the advanced view. It's just better for most things. And uh, that uh, style is down here. I just, I'm just going down. I've got, it's filtered to show all styles. So I've got a lot of stuff in here. Object, it's just gray, it's inheriting. There's nothing set in here. And like I always tell people, you can, you can filter things however you want to control what you're seeing as far as the properties over here, alphabetical, or you can use the group view. Um, and you just need to know, what am, I, what am I looking for here? Well, in this case, let's just say that I, all I'm interested in is the width of the thing, the width and the height. That's what I want to control. And so uh, there are, of course, other things I could change, but that's really what I'm interested in. That's what most people are interested in. And so you're gonna find the width and height here under the box category, if you are using group view. And height, I'm actually, I'll come back to that in a second. It's the width that I wanna set in here. And I can click my, this little button or I can just type directly in here. And let's say, oops, let's say I want this to be 800 pixels. So I'm gonna type 800 PX, click off the thing. All right, so now this thing is dark because I have an, uh, I've set something explicitly in here. So it's not inheriting everything. So I've got a width of 800. Now, what about the height? Well, I could go in and I could put in a specific height too, but in order to maintain the, the ratio, the aspect ratio, I think it's better to go in and set this to auto. So the height will just be what it should be uh, once it gets to a width of 800, All right? So let's click that, let's build this thing again. And remember before, that video was really, really, really large. Uh, it was the original size of the video. And now I'm just controlling that more. Uh, it's gonna be 800 pixels wide and the height should be adjusted automatically. Go forward to that. I should, should have just taken the stuff out of the TLC to make this quicker, but there it is. All right, so 800 pixels wide, that's much easier to deal with right there. So you could do something 
like that to control the size. And, uh, you know, just, just play with it, uh, with your project. You might be settle on a certain size, but you can see that as I resize this, it is, it is at 800 pixels. So once the, my screen gets slower, now I, uh, gets narrower. Now I get in this, I get this, uh, horizontal scroll bar that I have to use. So maybe you can use, you know, a relative unit of measurement and that might be better for you. All right. That is for the MP4. And now let's go look at our YouTube video. So we have, we've got the original one I have in here and it's centered and this one isn't because I just inserted that and that was the default. So why is this one centered? You might be using this particular project template and you go, well, I like that. And I you know, want to change the video, but I don't want it centered. I want it to the left. Well, this is real easy. Look over at the structure bars. In addition to the object and paragraph, I put a div tag, which is just a container outside of this. And I have a class on that called center, right? So if I click on that, it selects everything. And I can go to my home ribbon. You can see div center. I can just tell it reset class. And now it's just using the main div which I don't have any alignment on, and it's just set like that. So you can use styles to control things like that. I do like to use div tags to create those. And if you don't know how to create a div tag, it's very simple. You get on a line like that, and this button here on the home ribbon right there, I'm going to click that. And I've got several divs in here, but I just, I just could select the main one right there. And now it's within a div. All right, that's that. Now, as far as sizing, well, so when I inserted the YouTube video, YouTube is, is, is a little bit quirky. I'm gonna go in and select this to edit the multimedia. And when I did, I just kept all the, uh, all the default settings in here. But notice when you insert a YouTube video and you don't change anything, you come back in here, it on the size, it actually put in the size 560 by 315. And you're thinking, well, I don't necessarily want that. Uh, I want, again, maybe 800 is the width and whatever the appropriate height is. But one, one thing I've noticed is that trick with setting the automatic uh, doesn't really work well with uh, YouTube videos. And so what I do is I'll put, I'll get the size and I'll put this in a style sheet, not use this, but I wanna maintain the aspect ratio. So I know that maybe I want it 800 wide. How do I know how tall it is? Well, this is a little trick actually I use with uh, Madcap Capture, our screen capture tool, which I have open here. And I've got, let's go to this one. So I've got a YouTube video in here. This is just on our YouTube page. And uh, I am going to, uh, create, a, do a new screen, uh, screen capture, although I'm not really going to capture it. And you can see that I can go and get just that width and height. And I'm doing this because I just want to know the, the dimensions. And with capture, you got this little thing to lock it in. So if I click these bars and uh, increase the size, it's going, to, it's going to maintain the height and the width ratio. So I'm going to click that and maybe I come out here to 800 pixels. That's what I want. Get it in there. 800 by 448. And that's just a little trick sometimes I use. Uh, in addition to using capture to do screen captures, I'll use it sometimes for that purpose. So I'm gonna cancel out of this. So back in my flare project. Now I'm gonna go in and let's say that I want to control the size of, so on this one, I'm going back to my MP4. I want to remember what I did here. All right, so I've got that set at 800, but again, I don't necessarily want to use the local, the that I want to use was coming from the style sheet. So what I can do in my style sheet on object, I can create what are called classes, class selectors. And for uh, my MP4s, maybe I can, 
I can just type MP4 um, with something like that, whatever, whatever I want. Okay. And now, so I did change it. Yeah, that's what I did. I changed the width and the height on my object, but maybe I want different. Uh, I want to use a class. So I'm going to go back and set this to default and I'm going to change this to default. And so it's going back to the way it was. And I'm going to use the class selector so I can be, <clears throat> I can have variations on sizes if I want. So width, again, I'm going to put in here 800 pixels, right? And on the height, I'm going to set that to auto. Okay. So that's for that one for my MP4. And now I'm going to do the same thing for my YouTube videos. I'm just going to show you the difference here. All right, click that. I get another class selector here. So now say on the width again, I want 800 pixels, but I'm not going to put, I'm not going to select auto for this. This is why I want different selectors over here. I'm going to put in Let's do 448 pixels, what it was telling me. All right, because if I just put in, if I used auto, it would, that's for whatever reason, isn't working with the YouTube videos. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in here. There's my object, this is my MP4. I can select that, go up here and select my MP4 width. And it changes the size in there. And by the way, if I were to insert a brand new, video like i wanted to do the same thing select that gilbert and uh down here under style class now i could select it from there too so i don't have to do it after the fact i can do it when i'm inserting the video all right all right so i did that one i'm going to save again youtube is a little bit you know can be a little bit squirrely with this and I am going to select my object. And I'm going to come in here and select YouTube width. All right. And so now when I build my output, I've noticed that sometimes when I would go in and change the, do this in the style sheet, YouTube acts a little bit goofy. And sometimes you might have to close and reopen Flare. But if I go in here, you can see it's still got my other settings in here. And I'm going to change this to use the default. All right. So because I had that set locally in there, it was the smaller size. It was still set on there. But now that I changed it to default, it's now kicked in the style sheet. Right. All right. So now I'm going to see if this will let me build the... Uh, We'll see if YouTube cooperates with this. No, it didn't. See, it, the build failed. That's what I've noticed sometimes happens. So what I'll do, and that's that's a YouTube, I don't know why, it's a YouTube thing. It doesn't happen with other videos. So what I will often do is I will go and I'll close out a flare and I'll actually go into Windows sometimes and just delete my output folder and then it works. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'll be right back. All right. So I went into Windows. I closed this, went into Windows, cleared up my output folder, and let's try this one more time. And I want this one. And let's go. And now it's building fine. And I don't know why uh, that happens with YouTube videos. It's just a weird YouTube thing. So generating the output should finish here in just a moment. And let's open it. Okay, I'm gonna go through to get to that page where I've got my video. And there it is. So there is one that's controlled, that's the MP4. The size is controlled through the style sheet. And this one is controlled through the style sheet. So size is probably the most common thing that you're going to want to do. Um, and so that, is that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it with styles. But let's also talk about briefly positioning because maybe right now this is just, all right, I got text and I got video and then a video below that. Maybe you want video 
to be off to, and don't get distracted by Gilbert. I know he's cute. So <clears throat> you want the video to be off to the side or something like that. Well, let's go back into the flare output. And so you can, actually, let's go back into this project. And I wanna show you, there was, when you edit the videos, you do have that option in the dialogue to control the positioning, okay? And uh, there's all kinds of settings in here. Where do you want it? You want it to float. That's the, that is, is, is uh, CSS. You want to float something. Do you want to float? To, where do you want to float it? Left, right, you know, left of the frame, you know, and then you got this clear option and vertical alignment. And so you can go in and you can try this and play with this. But what I like to do is I like to use responsive layouts. And I have another video on responsive layouts. And so you can watch that and get the idea. So it's not just for videos, it's for anything when you want to structure output. So back here in my output, you can see I'm using structured, um, I'm, I'm using, uh, yeah, this uh, responsive layout to structure my content. So I've got actually, I've got a cup, you can't see them because I don't have borders on them, but a couple of cells, one right here that's holding this table with all these links and another cell right here that is holding the link to my video and this image and all that. And what I can do is if I resize this and go down to a cell phone size, it, it flips this stuff. And so my video is right there, more my, my video link and my image is right there. So I would prefer that. I think it's easier to do to put these in these um, in these cells so that you can control what is to the right, what's to the left, and then how do they stack. So that's just something that I would recommend. Okay, one other thing to let you know when you want to edit these. So this is pretty easy. I've just got a couple of videos in here. And so if I wanted to edit this, like I wanted to swap out the YouTube link in here. I keep getting this in the wrong place. All right. If I wanted to swap this out, I could just right click, go in here and change this. Okay. But if you've got them all over the place, one thing that you can do is use find and replace. On the home ribbon, go to find and replace. And I copied that YouTube link and I can put it in here. And then Let's say I've got, I'm just, that's the same one, but let's say I'll just change up a couple of things. Maybe that's, this is the new YouTube link and I'll put that in replace with, and then I'll go down here and select find and source code. And then I'll do a find all and replace all. Now you want to make sure that you have these things entered just right. Uh, because if you do a find all replace all and you don't have all those things open, you you know, you're not going to be able to undo it. So just maybe practice doing that on a small project first. But I do this all the time. When I need to swap out old YouTube videos for new ones, I do this. Okay. That's what I wanted to cover with editing the video links and the design. Um, of course, there's more I could cover, but hopefully that something, something that I talked about in there is what you're going to be doing. It's going to cover most of what you're trying to do. All right. In the last, sec last section, I just want to go over just a few things to consider when you're working with videos in Flare. Okay, before I wrap up this video, just a few things we want to look at in addition to what we've already covered. Uh, one more time, back into Flare. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that we have uh, this video example in two of our project templates, uh, the e-learning project templates, which you can get to when you go to create a brand new Flare project and you get into this. I'm going to actually move this over here because of my resolution and right here. So this is the one we've been looking at. This e-learning project template has got that video example, but I also have this e-learning and PDF one. And it's mostly the same, except in this topic, there, there are some differences in various topics. But in this particular one, Remember before I was showing you this and it was just text and we had the video in there. Well, now I've got 
couple, you know, another line of text and we've got these colors in here. So these are conditions and I conditioned some things out. Uh, so conditions allow you to flag certain things that you want to be in some outputs, but maybe not in others. And if I go to the project organizer under conditional text, I've got this condition tag set and I've got these set up. You can add as many as you want. I got one set up for online only, one set for print only. The idea is when I flag things for online only, I, I want them, I definitely want them to be in online. Print only, I want them to be in that PDF, but I don't want them to be in online. And so because this same topic is being used in both my online and PDF output, I needed to put some conditions on here. And I wanted this condition online only, and you just right click, or there's different ways to do this, conditions, and I set it right there. And I did the same thing with this paragraph for print only. And in this case, I just put a link, a hyperlink, text hyperlink to that YouTube video, which will work in PDF. But on this, where I actually added the video, I put a condition out here on that div tag for online only. And the reason is because when I generate the PDF output, if I included this, this would just be a static image and that doesn't do anybody any good. And so just keep that in mind. If you're generating different outputs, use conditions uh, to keep things separated. And then once you have your conditions set on everything, then you can go into your target and you go into, which is the target of course, is the thing that you're gonna use to generate your output. You go to the conditional text tab, and you can see that I set online only, I wanna include it. Print only, I wanna exclude it using these options. It's that simple, okay? That's just an FYI. That's why this topic looks different in one project. This topic looks different in one project template than it does in the other. Okay, another thing I wanna bring up is when you go to insert and multimedia and you see all these options, one of the options you see in here is flash movie just don't use it. Just don't. It's, uh, I mean, Flash is technically still out there, but support for it has stopped. People have moved on from it. There's no reason to use that when you've got other options. People who used to be using the Flash, they're now using HTML5. And so just avoid that. <laughs> just avoid it. Now, another option you have in here is Windows Media Player, and you can use that. There, there is one little thing going on with Windows uh, Media, and that's because of the nature of the thing. If you have a link, it, 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 this is explained in, in the help, but if, you've, if your link has like starts with dot, dot, and then a slash, and you, the, it may not work for you. And the solution to this is to put your multimedia files in the same place as your topic file. So you can see, in this case, I've got my multimedia. Oh, I, that's actually the other project. It's the oops. This one is where we had where we did the, the thing, and we've got multimedia. There's that video file, and this is the topic. And so, solution to that is to have these in the same folder: that topic and and that video. That's a Windows Media thing. If you happen to be using Windows Media, and that is pretty much it, except for I would just encourage you, whatever you do with your videos, to test everything. Test it. Uh, figure out what you want to do. P start uh, with a small test project. Put them in there and test it. Test it on different browsers. You never know what browsers are going to support what um, or how it's going to look. So uh, I would definitely encourage you to do that. That's what I wanted to tell you about videos today. I know there's a whole lot more that I could have gone in and showed you, but what I'm hoping is that I've shown you the most basic things, the things that are most important to you that are gonna help you uh, get started with the videos and put them in and get them to look the way that you want and just navigate around things. That is going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.